Welcome to episode 3 of this DP Animation Maker series. Today I will show you how to animate a space scene with a rotating galaxy, stars, asteroids, and some settings I use to bring static images to life, like in the video you see here. Let's open DP Animation Maker. Click on the Change Background button and select your background. In my case, I have this galaxy in space. I will add all the images on Discord so you can download them for free. Next, click on Animated Brushes, select the Flow Brush Circular, then press Apply Selected Animation and close the window. Nothing happens yet because we haven't painted the area we want to animate. I'll first go to the Properties, which will give me this circle. I'll place the center of the circle in the middle of the galaxy. Then there are arrows that allow you to rotate. Two of those arrows, pointing inward, let you create an ellipse from the circle. You can rotate and scale it to fit the perspective of your galaxy. Now it looks good. Let's take the brush, make it a little bigger, and paint the area we want to animate in that circular motion. As you can see, as I paint, the selected area moves. You can choose to focus on the middle of the galaxy or paint the entire galaxy. You can also change the direction of the rotation. I've selected counterclockwise. Then I continue painting more. If you check the highlight effect mask, you can see which area you've selected, allowing you to paint the missing parts. Now, because the stars are painted on the edge, I get glitches where the stars are stretched. I can use the eraser to remove the effect from those stars. Keep doing this until it looks good. I think it's okay now. Let's see where we can change the speed. From the properties, I can reduce the speed to make it move a little slower for a more cinematic look. Don't forget to save the project from time to time. Give it a name and save it. Go to Airbrushes, then select Twinkling Stars and apply that animation. This lets you paint with little twinkling stars, so you can add a few to avoid having static stars. You can adjust the size to match your project, and in the Frequency setting, you can change how fast or slow the stars move. You can also adjust the colors and transparency if you want. By the way, I contacted the creators of DP Animation Maker and asked them to give a discount for my followers. I'll add a 15% discount link in the description. I don't earn anything from this, so this isn't a sponsored video or anything. Let's go to Animated Brushes again. This time, I'll select the Light Brush and click Apply Selected Animation. With this brush, we can make some of the bigger stars glow. Just paint over them to create a pulsating effect. You can adjust the strength and remember you can type in values to go over 100 if you want. You can also change the type to be constant if you want a static glow or use pulsation, which is useful especially for LED and neon lights. The random option creates a random flicker. I'll leave it as soft periodic and adjust the speed to see what works best for the stars. Just play with the settings and have fun. I'll make the brush a little smaller and paint over a few more stars. Now let's have some fun with particles. We haven't discussed those yet. We have this constructor button. Click on it and it will open the animation constructor window. Click on templates and look for a template called through space version two. Then click load selected template. If you wait a little, you can preview the effect with stars coming at you as if you're flying through space. Now let's close this window. You'll see a rectangle here that sets the area where the effect happens. You can use the sliders to adjust the size and the mouse lets you move it around. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can also move it from the corners to adjust the rectangle. It can still have some glitches sometimes. Like you can see one side got really big. I can use the numbers to adjust the size, but I don't see it on the screen right now. If that happens, just zoom out and you'll see that it's outside the view. Then I can move it back to the center and make it the same size as my background image. Now. The particle effect is a white gradient, but you can click on the particle option and choose different shapes or even add your own image. If I select golden particles, they'll be animated as you can see here. Let's try maybe some blue ones. It takes a little time to generate because they come from a distance, so they start small and get bigger. Then you can change the colors just like you do with gradients. Maybe I can make the stars smaller to fit the scene better. Under motion, you have more options to choose from. You can add more particles, and if you wait a little longer, more will appear. Right now, it's full of stars. If I only use one, it will generate very few particles, like you see sometimes. 
I'll leave it at 50, and until now, we've only changed the settings, but we haven't added it yet. So click Add to apply the animation. Now you can use the center to move it around and control the angle from where the particles come. Adjust it to fit your perspective. For transparency and speed, you can also change those settings here. I think I'll go with a speed of 20. I generated all my images with AI using Comfy UI and the Flux model. For more tutorials on that, check out my main channel, Pixaroma. So I have this sci-fi interior, like a huge spaceship, where you can see the galaxy through the window. Then I in-painted some objects to make it less boring, like this box and this device. And I also added one in the middle. After that, I removed the background in Photoshop for the part where the window glass is. Now, if we go back to DP Animation Maker, we can click on Import, then Open Image, and open that interior PNG image that has the transparent windows. After that, click Continue. Select Still Object, since we don't want to animate it, then click Finish Import. Now the interior image will be on top, depending on which layer you had selected when importing the image. If I click on the arrows, I can position the image where I want it to be. I'll leave it on top so that the moving galaxy is behind the image, making it look like we're seeing it through the window. Click on Constructor again, and this time, Let's not use a template, but create one from the settings we have. Go to Particle and click on Load Image. Here you can add either frame-by-frame -frame animation or a single image. I'll add this Asteroid PNG. After that, click Continue, and we can already see a preview of what it does. Next, go to Motion and play around with different motions. You'll see each one creates different animations and can be used for different projects. For this one, I want the tunnel flow motion. If I go to particle size, I can adjust the size to fit my scene. Then, from the rectangle settings, I can change the area size that will display the moving asteroids. I'll make it larger than my window. In motion, there are more settings available. I can change the direction to be backward, so the asteroids come toward the viewer, just like we did with the stars template. I can also turn off the rotation, so the asteroids move in a straight line. In spot per period, I'll reduce it to one because there are too many asteroids and it becomes distracting. I want only a few. Then when I click add, it's added to the scene. Right now, the asteroids are inside the ship, but I want them outside. I'll select that particle and move it down using the arrow so it's behind the interior image. Now it looks just how it should. Let's go to import this time. Click on open image and open the same asteroid image. Then click Continue. We have different animations here that we can use for different objects in space. But for this one, I want to use one-way path. This will move my image along a path. I can move the points along the path to guide my asteroid in the direction I want. I want it to move from the top right to the bottom left. You can move the points or the end anchors to change the curve of the path. From Image Properties, I will scale down the asteroid then from Path Edit, you can add or remove points. If you click the plus icon, it will add more points. It adds points by default each time you click outside the path. You can also use the minus icon to remove a point. I'll select the default one that lets me shape the path. I want the asteroid to come down, but the timing shouldn't be the same each time. I was thinking, why not move it outside the visible area and then have it reappear on a lower part of the window? It will go through the middle once, then take a while to circle around and come back again a little lower. You can change the speed, even to something really fast, like 2000, just to see how it goes so you don't have to wait for each round. I'll set the speed to 50, but that seems too slow, so let's increase it to 100, and I think that speed should work. After that, click Finish Import. Depending on which layer you had selected, it will add it on top of that layer. Now the asteroid is on top of my particles and under the interior PNG so it looks fine. Use the arrows to move it up or down to the right position. Select the interior layer, then zoom out in the top left corner. Next, go to Animated Brushes, click on the Light Brush, and apply the selected animation. Now, you can paint over the LED light to make it pulsate and add some motion. In the settings, you can change the type to pulsations, but in this case, I'll go with random, so it flickers randomly. Then I go to the other corner and do the same. 
you can experiment with all kinds of lights. For example, under lines, you have different types of lines you can add. Simply draw a path and play with the settings to create various interesting effects. Now the purpose of this tutorial wasn't to create the perfect ambiance image. You can spend minutes or hours improving your ambiance, but I just wanted to show you different tools you can use so you can have fun and bring your images to life. When you're finished, you can click on export, then select export animation to MP4. Give it a name and click save. I like to choose maximum quality. For resolution, I select custom to match the size of my background image. For frames per second, 25 is fine, or 30 if you prefer. For duration, I'll go with 60 seconds, then click export. And this is the result. If you found something useful, please leave a like and a comment to help me grow this channel so I can make more tutorials for you. If you have any questions, feel free to check my Discord channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.